is Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only podcast about consulting procurement or how to buy consulting services. You'll get tips on how to use consulting, buy consulting, and managing the consulting. And now your host, Ellen Lafitte. Welcome back to Smart Consulting Sourcing, the definitive guide to mastering the way consulting services are utilized, procured, and managed. I'm Ellen, your host, and I'm excited to have you join us for another insightful episode in our series on consulting cost optimization. Today, we're diving into pricing levers. So what exactly are pricing levers, you might ask? They are key negotiation tools for consulting projects, but with a unique twist, which I reveal shortly. But first, let's recap our previous episode's discussion on scoping levers and their significance throughout the life of a project. So it's important to remember that Effective scoping follows strategic demand management, ensuring that your efforts are focused on initiatives that deliver significant value to your organization. We explored how scoping levers help tailor the project's focus, depth, breadth, and the consultant's approach and staffing to align closely with high-value activities. So if you missed this episode or any others in our series that outline strategies for optimizing consulting spend, I encourage you to catch up. All episodes are available on major podcast platforms and YouTube. And for those who prefer reading, <laughs> we visit our thought leadership section at consultingquest.com. So if you enjoy our content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, thank you. For tuning in today at Consulting Quest, we are dedicated to help you leverage consulting to accelerate your transformation. Now, let's return to your main topic for today, pricing. Now, many of you might think pricing is pretty straightforward, right? You see a price, you know the supplier is making a margin, and naturally, you aim to push that margin down to snag a better deal. That's simple enough. But here's the twist. That typical approach doesn't quite fly in the consulting world. Yes, consulting is known for its high margins, but don't expect more than a five to 10 discount from consulting firm. So push beyond that, and you're not just talking discounts, you're looking at discoping. This means subtle tweaks in the scope or adjustments in staffing to bring down the price. You know, consulting costs hinge largely on two things. Uh, the workload and the seniority of the consulting involved. If you're not seasoned in crafting proposals, these adjustments can be tough to spot. That's why the brute force approach of simply slashing prices doesn't cut it here. So it's a bit more nuanced, which makes it all the more fascinating, doesn't it? So, all right, um, let's dive into some insider tricks that we often employ when assisting our clients. You I might want to jot this down. Um, so as I mentioned previously, negotiating in consulting isn't a straightforward linear process of scope first, price second. There's quite a bit of give and take involved. First up, let's talk about leveraging competition, arguably the most effective strategy in our toolkit. And here was it so powerful. You know, leveraging competition not only gives you comparables, for better decision making, but also helps lower the anchor point, keeping incumbents on their toes. Here's how you can make this work to your advantage. The key is to invite consulting firms to your request for proposal that truly have a shot at winning the gig. That means choosing firms that not only have the right expertise and references, but also the capacity to handle your project. And while it's wise not to name drop the competitors in your RFP, you can drop subtle hints, you know, during briefings, uh, Q&A sessions, and while analyzing proposal. For instance, mentioning that other firms have posed sharp questions or suggested smart tweets that can help keep everyone on their toes, pushing them to sharpen the pencils on their proposal and their pricing. So you can also check things up by including both new and established players in your RFP. 
Think about inviting up and coming firms alongside the usual suspects or mixing smaller budget friendly consultants with the big industry names. This is this not only spices up the competition, but it also encourages more aggressive pricing, potentially leading to better deals. It's a great way to ensure that you're not only getting cost effective solutions, but also innovative ideas and approaches, striking the right balance between quality and cost. Now let's explore rebates and discounts. So using rebates and discount effectively allows organizations to maximize value, taking into account the slim margin consulting firms typically leave for negotiation and their response to seasonal variations. So the concept here is simple. The longer the engagement, the lower the daily fee should ideally be. Consulting firms often prefer a slight price reduction in exchange for the stability of continuous work. It's common practice, similar to volume-based rebates in a master service agreement, to expect lower fees for longer projects. So you might set up a system where discounts kick in only after reaching a certain spend threshold, but discounts of up to 15% are not in common with commitments of over $1 million or $2 million. So typically, smaller firms tend to offer more generous discounts compared to larger ones. Now, never take the least price at face value. It's usual to ask for a discount and consulting firms generally anticipate this. Many are ready to offer a discount ranging for five to 10%. So this approach leverages a typical sales strategy where the initial price includes some room for negotiation. So by making it standard practice to negotiate, you often secure better terms and pricing, which optimizes your spending without sacrificing the quality or the scope of your services. The, the discounts are often already factored into the pricing because consultants expect you to negotiate. So make sure you do so. Now, let's delve into our third lever. It's the creative fee structure. So this method is not widely used, often because many organizations either aren't sure how or when to use it, or they use it incorrectly. Traditional consulting agreements usually involve flat fees, which makes expenses predictable, but can be hard to justify, especially when you know budgets are tight and outcomes are uncertain. So by linking consulting fees to actual results, you can ensure a better return on investment, increasing um, your readiness to invest if the expected value is realized. Performance-based fees are designed around specific both tangible and intangible benchmarks. The goal is to incentivize the consulting firms to deliver top-notch performance throughout the project. So there's usually a lower upfront fee that ensures a basic payment regardless of outcome. But if the performance targets are met or surpassed, the consulting firms can earn significantly more than with a standard flat fee arrangement. And, and these setups ensure that consultants are properly rewarded for exceptional work while providing clients with protection against unsatisfactory outcomes. Now, success fees are strictly tied to definite outcomes, such as realized savings, increased sales, or other measurable business impacts. This, this compensation model is fundamentally a pay for performance system where the consultant's earnings are directly linked to the success of the client. So this can be particularly appealing when project goals are straightforward and the results are quantifiable. Now, before we move on, here's a piece of advice. You know, only use this lever if you're ready to share the gains with the consultants. This isn't just a tactic to reduce cost. In fact, these fees often end up being higher than typical flat fees if the consultant meets their targets. And speaking from experience, always, always honor your commitment. If you've agreed to a bonus of a successful delivery and the consultant deliver, then pay the bonus. Failure to honor your agreements not only brings you as a poor client, but in the tight, knit world of consulting, word spreads fast. And interestingly enough, consultants tend to charge more 
to their difficult clients. So in the long run, you might end up facing the exact opposite of what you intended. But, you know, perhaps it's a bit of karma, right? Well, now let's dive into some more pricing levers that while perhaps secondary can still play a significant role in reducing your consulting cost. These might not offer instant big savings, but they sure can add up to substantial optimization over time. Uh, travel and expenses, the TNE, traditionally make up a notable percentage of project cost, which doesn't always make sense. Some companies might even throw in an all-inclusive offer. Especially post-pandemic, the acceptance of remote work has changed the game. TNE should be minimal if cons consultants are working remotely. It's crucial to align the TNE model with um, the proposed approach. You know, you implement measures like capping expenses, uh, adhering to company policies, and requiring approval for to further squeeze TNE cost. Keep in mind that. TNE pricing might not have caught up with these new norms. So compare wisely between all inclusive and at cost TNE quotes. You can um, even use historical data from past projects to help gauge what's fair. There's another lever that you can use it's setting target must prices that can anchor your negotiation, starting discussion from an optimized price point based on thorough market research and your own budget you know, limits. And this is especially helpful when responses to the same RFP can vary widely depending on the project scope and the level of support needed. If your budget and timeline are tight, simplify things. Set a target price upfront. You know, many hesitate to reveal their budget, fearing that consultants will always hit the ceiling, leaving potential savings on the table. But remember, that's what scoping negotiations are for. This also helps you distinguish between consultants who are willing to work within your parameters and those who might be looking to maximize the project scope. Now, red cards. <laughs> they are a godsend for a long-term project when you might see consultants turnover or need extensions or on the time and material. Um, these cards should detail consultant profiles and standard rates, helping to streamline processes for project renewals and staff additions. Use pricing benchmark to understand market rates and negotiate more favorable terms. However, remember that lower rate costs don't automatically mean lower overall project costs. You know, more experienced consultants might deliver results quicker with fewer people offering you a higher return on investment in the long run. Now, to wrap up, we've explored several powerful levers that you can use to effectively reduce your cost. And as you've seen, my approach isn't just about slashing numbers. It's about optimizing costs while still focusing sharply on value. That's a common critique of procurement in consulting, you know, that driving down costs often means a deep in value delivery. However, this doesn't have to be the case. The secret is to collaborate with consultants to craft the best proposal possible, not to work against them. So let's ditch the tough guy act, you know, it tends to bring more headaches than, than saving actually. And, and just to set the record straight, while it's important to stay sharp and not take every word from consultants as gospel, remember that most consultants are genuinely honest and hardworking folks who take great pride in their work. Yes, they're in it to make a business, but then again, aren't we all? Oh, so here's the, the key takeaway. Never negotiate pricing or scoping in isolation. Always consider both because scoping directly affects pricing and vice versa. If you take just one thing from today's podcast, let it be this. You'll be far better off. Now, before I end today's episode, I'd like to leave you with a few useful resources for you to chew on till we meet again next week. Firstly, I would highly recommend heading over to consultingquest.com to read through our insight title, Pricing Benchmark in Consulting, What Makes It an Indispensable Tool for Procurement. 
So in this insight, we explore the significance of pricing benchmark in consulting procurement and how this indispensable tool facilitates fair pricing uh, negotiation, how it ensures optimal value for services rendered and how it enhances the decision-making processes. Uh, another resourceful read that I would recommend is our insight on consul.io titled Negotiate Your Consulting Agreement Like a Boss, Four Key Cast Strategies. In this piece, we unlock the secret to mastering your consulting agreement with four key cast negotiation strategies. So through, all, through this piece, you will also discover how to secure the best terms, protect your interests, and how to be a pro at the negotiation guide. And finally, to round these all up, I'd like to recommend reading one of our latest pieces titled How to Decode the Price of a Project with These Five Simple Tactics. So this insight will help you break down and decode costs with ease. You will also learn how to navigate project expenses like a pro and how to make smarter and cost-effective decisions for any project. And in case you're looking for more such topics, then you should check out uh, consultingquest.com and consuls.io. Uh, they're packed with all sorts of helpful content like insight and podcasts and ebooks and more. So whether you're eager to boost your transformation or just want to make smarter buying decisions, you'll find plenty of valuable information there. All right, folks, that's all for today. Next week, we'll dive deeper into how these sets of levers intertwine, and I'll share some practical strategies for using them effectively. And before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for all the latest episodes and updates. And thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Your thoughts and feedback mean the world to me. So don't hesitate to reach out on LinkedIn or via email at hcl at consultingquest.com. I'm, I'm always up for chat. And if there's uh, any topic that you'd love to hear about in future episodes, send them my way to you. I can't wait to hear from you. So until next time, stay safe and keep up the smart consulting sourcing game. Au revoir for now and happy sourcing. You've been listening to Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only podcast about consulting procurement. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit the website at consultingquest.com. Find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. For questions and comments, send an email to ellen.lafitte at consultingquest.com. See you next time.